And Yahweh, Elohim, said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart. Holy Yahweh Almighty, we're singing holy. It is good to give thanks unto Yahweh and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. It is good to give thanks unto Yahweh and to sing praises unto thy name, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, upon a solemn tree, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thou, O Yah, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in thy hand. It is good to give thanks unto Yahweh and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. It it is good to give thanks unto Yahweh and to sing praises unto thy name. Those that planted in the house of Yah shall flourish in the courts of Yah. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. To show that Yah is upright, He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. It is good to give thanks unto Yahweh and to sing praises unto Thy name, O Most High. It is good to give thanks unto Yahweh. And to sing praises unto thy name. Some are praise, some are praise. To sing with our voice and string. Some are praise, some are praise, praise him. He is the Elohim of the Israelites. He is Yahweh, our sovereign King. It is good to give thanks unto Yahweh and to sing praises unto thy name. O Most High, O Most High, O And shalom, shalom, sisters, daughters of Zion. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another week of Sister to Sister. I'm your host. I have a beautiful mother to my right. I have Sister Damaris to my left. I know that you will love tonight's show. I came to listen. I hope you did as well. All you need tonight, and maybe you'll need your word. Maybe you'll need your, your Bible. But if you just have a pencil, a pen, and some paper, to really write down any keynotes, anything that's said tonight that, that should minister to you later, that is all you need. Have your ears open. Have your children settled and quiet. Stay tuned for tonight's show. Sister Jennifer, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I am here. Shalom, daughters of Zion. It's wonderful to be here, and it's such a great honor and pleasure to have Mother Bullock there. We love you so much, and um, I just really look forward to taking note to what you have to say to instruct us to go forth. Hallelujah. She is humbled to my right. She has a microphone and she'll be ready to speak any minute. I wanted to, uh, Mother, do you want to just greet anybody and say anything at first before I give my shout out? you want to say shalom? She says, go ahead. Uh, what a what an honor to have her. I got a few, just a few quick notes. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to our sister Lisa. Sister Lisa, who y'all probably see 
you know, Sabbath services, if you're able to pick out heads and really distinguish who people are. And for those of you who've been in the ministry for years, of course, you know Sister Lisa. But she, she really dedicates a lot of her personal time, you know, and sacrifices a lot of her time to massage anyone here, you know, being in physical therapy and, and working on muscles and aches and pains. And, and she really, uh, she's at our beck and call. You know, she would bend over backwards to do and to get here for any of us. So I just had... Had that in my heart, so we love you and thank you, Sister Lisa. Y'all sees, y'all knows, and and for any of you, any of you uh, who I don't see every day and who the community doesn't see every day, thank you for doing what you do behind closed doors for one another. You know, the sharing, the loving, the praying, the commitment, everything, the giving, everything you're committed to do in your prayer life uh, for the Father, for the ministry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope to see all of you, if I've never seen you before, on this side of glory. But if not, we will see the King together. Uh, I wanted to thank Sister Wenda, uh, Sister Angeline, I think I'm getting that correctly, uh, any other sister up north that has, uh, you know, did so kindly to our pastor and to Sister Carol on their trip. They spoke so highly of it, showed, you know, beautiful pictures even on the, the last, you know, sermon that he gave us, um, just what, Bible study, I believe. Um, so thank you. We love you. We love you, Northern Tribes. Bless you all. Um, also, the last thing I had, side note, remember, and I often remind you, we're going to have a drama, or if you want to call it a play, that's fine, a play at Tabernacles. In this play, we're putting together a video compilation of all of us sisters. So I need each of you, if this is your first time hearing it, I need you to write this down. If you're interested, and I would like each of you to do this, Make a video, turn your phone landscape, landscape style. Make a video of yourself saying, I am a Hebrew, I was born in blank. So whatever state you were born in, that's all I need you to say. You don't got to say your name or anything else about you. When that video comes together, it's going to be powerful, it's going to be beautiful. Um, Just to let you know it's raining, and you know, Pastor often says it, when it's raining here, when it's lightning here, we can lose power. I pray that we do not lose power in service tonight. I am ready and willing to hear what Mother has to say, and I know you all are. She has driven all the way from North Carolina overnight and through the night and hasn't even been here 24 hours, and she's willing to sit down and minister to us. So I want to hear what she has to say. But send that video. I am a Hebrew. I was born in blank, whatever state that may be. Send it to germainfwest at gmail.com, all lowercase, germainfwest west at gmail.com shout out to any sisters in the dining hall gathering to hear us thank you sister bar for your co-hosting support and help down low down the hill and bless you sister toma if you're standing by listening sister jennifer what's up talk to me before we uh you know introduce our mother and get going i I know you might have something on your heart you may not what you got anything yes ma'am i wanted to share um just a couple of things that have been on my heart since um since our visit actually to straightway tennessee and, um, you know, I was in the kitchen and was helping with a meal for six day, and I was doing something that we may think is really simple. I was slicing um, pickles, slicing pickles. We were having um, burgers that day. And I remember the thought in my head was, you know, I want to taste a little bit of pickle with my burger. And that might seem innocent. And so I'm slicing the burger, I mean, slicing the pickle, and, you know, it's a little bit thicker than normal. So Sister Carol comes in the kitchen, and she kindly says, Sister, are those pickles for burgers? And I say, yes, ma'am. And she says, can you slice them a little thinner? And so I just kind of smiled to myself because I know where this is going. I've, I've had my own idea in my head, you know, without getting consent, without getting permission, even in something as what may seem as small as slicing a pickle. And so I say, yes, ma'am, I will do that. And so I, I look at Sister Ashley and I said, you know, I was I was thinking that I wanted a little bit of, taste a little bit of pickle with my burger so I was slicing it thick. And Sister Ashley looked at me and she said, that's what you get for doing it for yourself and not doing it for the whole. And I, I, I thought about that, you know. I really thought about that. And since I've been back from Straightway, Tennessee, I can hear those words ring in my head when I'm doing pretty much anything. Even if another sister is doing something and the motive is not correct, that is what rings in my head. And so, you know, living as a community, 
we have to make sure, or, or if we desire to live as a community because we are tribal people, we have to do what's best for the whole and not what's best just for ourselves. You know, we have to ask ourselves, what is the motivation behind my service? And we have to remember that our service is an offering to the Most High Yah. And, you know, Elder here, he's been talking a lot about um, the type of offering that we give up. Is it a Cain offering or is it an Abel offering? Will the Father reject it because our motives are wrong or will he accept it? But will we really be honest enough with ourselves to recognize, like, what type of offering that we're putting forth? This is why I'm happy to have a sister in my life that will be honest with me, you know? I have sisters in my life, sisters who live on the land there at Straightway Tennessee, and they're very honest with me, and I really appreciate their honesty. But, you know, community means that everything is shared. The kitchen that you cook in, the bathroom you use, the vehicle you drive, the room you sleep in, you need to be ready for guests. Um, and so we have to consider the fact that um, we need to leave something as if the Messiah is going to come and use it after us or as if the Messiah is being served in whatever meal we cook, whatever plate we fix, the house that we clean, the pickle that I'm slicing, the Messiah is going to eat it. And so I, I need to know, okay, what's best for the whole, not just for me. So that has really been on my heart, and it's, it has really ministered to me you know, it, it's amazing how a few words can just really minister to you if you allow it. So I just wanted to share that to all of you. Maybe it will help you. Maybe it's just for me. So bless you all. No, thank you. Mother Bullock, anything to add on that note? She's over here, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> because she understands. And for you who, who may have not met Mother Bullock, this is a very sober mother, a very sober mother. I, have, I hold her in high esteem. You're going to hear it, I'm sure, throughout the night. The word says, let another man's lips praise you, you know, not your own. Uh, so mother needs encouragement, too. So I'll reach out to each of you tonight who might want to just call and encourage her, you know. This is a very humble position for her to be in behind a microphone taking questions, you know. And, and she's usually in a humble position of listening, listening to the show and listening to the ministry. But call in if you want to encourage. If y'all will lay something on your heart to say, you know, something she's said that's, you know, changed your life or made you think a different way. Or if you just have a question for a mother. Maybe you don't know her. Maybe you want to know her. Uh, please call in, sisters. This show will be as long as you want it to be because I'm not going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to carry this conversation with my mother. And uh, please, take it away, mother, as far as you know her topic and doing things as unto the whole and unto yeah. the Messiah. Okay. Shalom, shalom. As Sister Jennifer was talking, um, I was agreeing with because a lot of times we are so prone to think to do something for ourselves and not just for everyone or looking at the whole picture. Um, I I stay in North Carolina. My twin sister stays behind me. I have my sister move in that from Atlanta, Georgia. So. My mindset is us working together, and and their their mindset is I'm an individual person, <laughs> so there's a struggle there, and to have people with the same mindset working together, you can get a lot done, and it keeps down a lot of confusion. It keeps down a lot of mess if you unite in 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 one mind. In order to unite in one mind, you have to couple that with prayer. You kind of get away from prayer. I don't care how you try. Prayer, I was telling Sister Barbara, prayer is a, the key to everything. If you are praying, I'm not talking about this five-minute prayer and getting up, but a breakthrough prayer in your spirit, and that will allow you to handle anything that come along. Stuff will just roll off your back, you know, like water. It wouldn't, it wouldn't bother you if you have a praying spirit and, and you you have coupled yourself in prayer. And prayer will show you, okay, I need to do this for everybody, not just for me or just for me and my husband or my children, but for the whole group. You will get that mind of wanting to work together and think about somebody else besides me, myself, and I. Because coming out of the world, coming out of Christianity, it has taught us to think about me and myself and I, but now we're realizing who we are. We can't think that way no more. We have to think about the whole community and trying to build a community. And, and uh, I just love coming to Straightway because I see how they work together. 
and they think about each other, and I just love that. And I'm praying that some kind of way that um, I have that in North Carolina on our little community I'm trying to get together. But um, I I really enjoyed what Sister Jennifer was saying. Um, it's just, just the little things. And if you're praying, the Father will convict you of the little things. And then he move, move you on to bigger things. It's the little, I heard a preacher say years ago, it's the little foxes that destroys the vine. It's not the big things. It's the little things that we overlook and we pass by and sweep it under the rug. And you keep sweeping up on the rug. And next thing you know, you got a big lump there. And then the next thing you know, you don't have the spirit of Yah. And you're wondering why it happened because you done swept so many little things under the rug. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And what comes to my mind, just briefly, Mom, is, uh, you know, sisters, when it is not about you and you're just in a home and you don't have the community and you just got your house and your, your, your husband and your children, your grocery list ain't what you want on it. It's what you need to serve your husband. You know, keeping even that in line and perspective with the order of Yah. You don't make out what you want to go by. You want to serve your husband. Put things in order. So, Sister Jennifer, anything, anything else, my sister? I kind of we had chatted earlier this week, sisters, and she was going to sit back and listen and not be live with me the whole show. Do you want to go at this point, Sister Jennifer? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to be releasing. I'm going to sit back with my notepad. Bless you all. Hallelujah. I'll bless you. We love you. And call back you and anything from Georgia, okay, with any questions. All right, my sister? Yes, ma'am. We shall. Shalom. All right. Shalom. And just a reminder, it's raining. If we lose power, you can probably hear the thunder in the background. It's raining pretty hard. It's been raining for a large portion of the day here. Um, If we lose power, give us 10 minutes. Like Pastor says, give us 10 minutes to get things up and running. Sometimes the power just pops and and we got to reboot, turn things on or whatever. Give me a moment to do that so we can continue with the show. After that 10-minute mark, uh, we would call it. But uh, in faith, hopefully, we'll carry it through the night. My question, Mother, for you, and my first question is, I want you to minister to, obviously, the needs of the sisters and the needs of the daughters of Zion. And sometimes we need to be hit. We need to see ourselves. We need to uh, see ourselves in a way that we never have. And my question is, what problems or problem, if any, do you see amongst the daughters of Zion that could hinder our spiritual growth? Well, getting back to the P word, prayer. Yeah, all right. Okay. Prayer. Getting back to the P word, prayer, because you got you got to pray. It just it's the key. Because if you don't pray, and most of the time I can look at you and tell you whether you've been praying or not. You know, because it's, it's the way you carry yourself. And when you go in prayer, it changes your countenance, it changes your walk, your talk, it changes everything about you. And when you're a, a praying person, everybody will know that. You will have to open your mouth. There's an or, as they say that will surround you, which is the anointing of the Father. But and it, you will carry that at all times. I remember I was at um my husband we went to um um county fair and this man he said he wants to uh, uh guess my age and then he looked at me, he said, I've never seen a woman like you you got such an aura around you. And he's on the mic, and this thing going all over. I'm saying to myself, please be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. You know, I don't want everybody to know this. Be quiet. Because people will recognize a per- person that's been in prayer. They'll recognize a person that's been with the Father. Yes. They'll know that. You will not have to open your mouth. You will not have to prove nothing because they'll know that automatically. Automatically. And I was sharing with Sister Barbara earlier today. We was at another state fair, and um, I saw this lady walking towards me, and she I could tell like she was kind of afraid of me or something like that. And by the time she got close to me, she began to cringe. I said, okay, demon, I see you. <laughs> you recognize me, and I see you. And, you know, and demons will cringe. And when if you stay in prayer, when you walk into the room, I hear pastor say it all the time, you set the atmosphere. You set the atmosphere. You have the power to close down and shut down everything that's around you that's not like the Father. And I'd I be, I be at places and folk be cussing up a storm and using them words, 
And they say, oh, excuse me, mother, <laughs> you know, <laughs> excuse me. And they look at this other lady and just you know, pay her no mind because they know the anointing, they know the power of prayer, they know your life. Demons recognize you, and they will calm down. But prayer is the key. Hallelujah. Good, uh, very good answer, which lets us know we're lacking. We're lacking, mm-hmm. sisters. Uh, remember the question, what's the problem? What is the problem? Her answer is prayer. So we're lacking. Remember that. So, Mom, what is holiness? My next question. And talk to the sisters who may never live on a community mm-hmm. or don't live on one now. Mm-hmm. How do you, Mother, maintain holiness in a world full of lust and evil, right where you are? I'm sure you're going to say prayer again. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's shaking her head, yes. But talk to us. Yes. What, what is holiness? Yes, well, prayer again and a mindset. You have to have your mind made up that I'm going to be holy I'm going to set myself apart from this and that. And then you have to have a dedicated life. Uh, there's, with me, I can't watch everything on television. I can't go everywhere and do everything. So when you begin to pull yourself from the world, you can pull yourself a word from the world at your house. You know, you don't have to be on a community, but pull yourself in from different things. Certain friends I don't hang around with because they pull on your spirit. And there's... Um, you can't just hang around just because they say they love the Father and they say this and that and they got a good talk. That's all they have is a good talk. You can't hang around those people. But you only hang around people that can grow. You can feel growth and you can grow. And when you get through talking with them, you felt like you have learned something and accomplished something, not with someone you have talked with someone and they didn't drain you. And then you got to go back and try to regroup and get yourself together. But... um. Well, prayer is the key. And living a separate life right outside is possible. I did it for years in Christianity. So if this is a piece of cake now. <laughs> you know, if you could do it in Christianity, you could do it here. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. And welcome to Angelica into the room as well. She's off to the side. So, mm-hmm. um, Mother, jumping back on prayer for a moment, mm-hmm. because praying and fasting mm-hmm. is is foreign to someone new in the faith, you know, someone mm-hmm. who's never never mm-hmm. prayed much, don't really know what to say, don't know how, you know, mm-hmm. and they, there's a lot of intimidation mm-hmm. that might come with mm-hmm. that, not knowing how to talk to the Father. Mm-hmm. What do you suggest? You know, it's not the volume of your voice Mm-mm. or your vain repetition. Mm-mm. You know, what do you suggest? Because as a, as a mother, you're mm-hmm. very... Confident and comfortable with your praying. Mm-hmm. You know the Father hears you. You get mm-hmm. your answers. Mm-hmm. How do you talk to someone who has doubts? Well, you talk to him and tell him about you, not about your husband, not about the children. Tell him about you, what's going on with you. Because a lot of times we try to pass, pass, this man is plucking my nerves. No, it's you. <laughs> it is. Talk to him about you. Because if he's plucking your nerves, there's something going on with you. <laughs> it's not him. It's you. So tell the father, say, Father, he's getting on my nerves. Why is he getting on my nerves? I know it's something I'm doing. And the father will show you. He'll just show you. So talk to him about you. And just tell him how you feel. Father, I'm upset today. This didn't go right. Just tell him. You know, and he'll listen. And uh, he'll tell you. What you need to do, but you got to be quiet after you pray. Be quiet and let him talk to you and let him minister to you. That's a lot of times we 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 go in prayer and then we hop up and go about our business. Then give him time enough to tell us nothing, but just lay there and, and meditate and let him talk to you. And he will. Hallelujah! What simplicity in her in her words. Obviously, time spent with the King, Mother. <laughs> Bless you. I am waiting on phone calls. I know I know. when I had um, Pastor Dow on, you know, uh, the sisters were in the chat room, you know, thanking me. And by the way, electricity, or at least the computer, has went down in the dining hall. That's what the call was for. So I don't, at this point, have um, my co-co-host or straightway co-host down the hill. Um, so we got some power issues down there. But back on tonight's topic. My, my my next question because when I when I chatted with Pastor mm-hmm. I noticed no one called in there was no <laughs> calls in the chat room I don't know if they were just relying on me but I got I got tons of compliments about the questions that I had you know just really answering a lot mm-hmm. of their hearts desires mm-hmm. so I hope that goes on tonight um, but I only mm-hmm. I only have a couple of more sisters so write things down that come to your mind as if this is the last chance you'll ever get to ask Mother 
You know, that's how we need to take advantage. Like Pastor was talking even uh, on Scripture study, every day matters. You may get something that will answer and break a stronghold for you just tonight. If you just ask, just call. Um, but, Mother, you're, you're an experienced woman, obviously of age and mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, with the most high, with time spent with him and great understanding. And that experience needs to be a teacher for us. And I have my next question based upon your experience. Is there something that your experience can teach us, especially pertaining to emotions and feelings of younger women? Mm-hmm. Because as you age, you grow contentment, and you're not bothered by the things that younger or youth are. Is mm-hmm. there an experience that, or something that you have in your heart that could, you could share and maybe save us some heartache? Anything come to mind? Um, yeah, we are emotional people. Um Dealing with women, <laughs> um, we tend to feed in too much. We could take an anthill and make a, mo- a whole mountain out of it, <laughs> and it don't be that way. So we have to learn to listen to the Father, calm down, and listen to his Father. And he would tell us, okay, cool it. It's not, it's not that bad. It's not. And a lot of times there are three voices that speak to you. There's the father speaking, there's you, and there's a demon. So you have to know which one is speaking, and you, and you will automatically know which one is speaking if you've been in prayer. <laughs> and your prayer will help you to distinguish which voice is speaking, because you will have three different uh, voices you hear. And a lot of times with, with yourself, you can convince yourself, oh, this is right, because it sounds right, you know, but if it don't line up with the word, it's not right. So line what whatever the voices you hear, line it up with the word. If it lines up with the word, okay, it's the father. If it don't line up with the word, it's throw it out. Throw it out. Because it's not the father. Hallelujah. We are having tons of lightning. I'm sure y'all can even hear it popping in the in the speakers. Oh, yeah. Maybe the thunder rolling too. I hope uh, give us sound text throughout the night. We're getting amens and glories, Mom. And mm-hmm. I got a phone call, so I'm gonna go to the phone call right now. But please keep us updated on the sound. Make sure that you all can continually hear us throughout the night. Uh, I could try to, you know, we can speak with the mics closer or make a. Uh, at least the only two buttons that I need to or am allowed to touch in here is the volumes of these mics. So that's all I would touch if I need to because we got a lot of loud background noise. Let's go to the phone calls or at least one one phone call, 706. Can you hear us? You're live with Mother Bullock and Sister Ashley. Yes, ma'am. Shalom, Mother Bullock and Sister Ashley. This is Sister Shandre. Shalom. Shalom. Talk to us. What you got? I have two questions. Um, the first question is, um, what advice could you give to a single sister who has a daughter um, who is possibly, I guess, interested in um, marriage? Um, how not to, I guess, keep them so, how not, how to to give them the advice of not being so focused on um, marriage or even guess courting, you know, at such a young age to keep their uh, mind off of, you know, courting or uh, even dealing with seeing other sisters or younger sisters or, you know, being, I guess, what I want to say, liked, I guess. I want to use that word, liked, and maybe they're not, you know, no one has been interested in them, or, you know, at least they don't know, but just to keep their minds off of the boys. And then the second question is um, just how did you get started in sewing? So I'm, but I'm going to hang up and I'm going to listen, okay? Oh, no! Cut out. Oh no. I heard you say almost. Can you hear me?
Shalom, shalom. Please give me a sound check if you can hear me coming through your speakers. We have had the electricity only flash and pop here. Brother Shane was nearby, ran over, and he's trying to click and, and hook us up. Please give me some tins. He's going to launch the chat room so I can see your numbers now. I want to bring Sister Chandra back on, and right now I don't have you as a live caller, so I'm going to try to reiterate your question as you call back in. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then you'll ask your second one. Obviously, you had more than one um, for Mother Bullock. So thank you all for standing by. I believe she's asking you, how do you, Mother Bullock, how do you help a mother, advise a single mother with, you know, without a father in the home, to instruct your daughter to wait, you know, wait on dating or, you know, not to prioritize that dating or uh, courting, some may call it. What advice can you give your, your daughter as a single mother, um, even if others are dating or courting or, or, you know, boys may be interested in some other girls, how can you build up a true right relationship with this this young girl uh, ordering her heart aright with the father, mother? Anything? I would say um, make her feel that she's special, which she really is very special. She's a princess. And she needs to wait on her prince. And that what others do is not for her. Because she's special. And just make her feel that she's very special. Because she is. That she needs to wait till the right young man come along in her life down the road. Because the father's gonna bless her down the road, and that she's special, that she just can't just date or just you know talk to guys. Because once you start talking and talking, talking leads to something else, and you're in trouble. So make her feel that she's special, and and, and share the scriptures with her about being a virtuous young lady, and tell her what trouble she will get into. Uh, having sex out, having sex outside the marriage because you begin to get so tired and you get your mind all messed up. And they not only get pregnant, but getting your mind messed up, that's a whole different level right there. So you don't want her to experience that. So share with her about this mind game that young boys play. And then you can be messed up in your mind. You can't even get your school work out because you're thinking about them all the time. So... I'm going to bring back, I think it's Sister Chandra. Let me see. Area code 706. Is that you, Sister? Can you hear us? Yes, ma'am. It's me. Hallelujah. Thank you for calling back in. And you'll have to speak up a little bit because the rain in the background is really loud here. And so, okay. uh, yeah, I can hear you really well now. Um, I hope I hope I did did well at least covering some time on the show, covering your question. Please ask anything and re-ask anything, Sister, That if you wanted another direction. Oh, yes, ma'am. You uh, asked the question well, and uh, thank you for your answer, Mother Bullock. Um, the other question was just how did you get started in sewing? Oh, now that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been sewing ever since I was in high school. So it's it's a gift. I remember I but they used to have home make in high school. So I was taking home make, and one of the projects was to make an outfit. So um, I got a machine and made my little outfit, and my teacher looked at it, and she said, um, did your mother help you with that? I said, no. Well, can your mother sew? I said, yes. And she wanted to give me a little grade because she thought my mother had done it for me. But I, I, I put that outfit together myself. Then I realized that I could sew. I had a gift. So I've mm. been sewing ever since I was about 16, and I'm 60 now. So, okay. But you don't have to have a gift. You can just learn how to sew. It's easy. If you can sew a straight line, you can make anything. It's very easy to sew. A lot of times people try to make it look complicated because they don't want to really help you. But it's really easy. One day I would give some sewing classes. <laughs> One day I will give some sewing classes, but it's it's, it's easy because I've learned how to sew the simple way. I don't I I try not to sew that complicated way where it take you a long time. This is 
skirt, you just go up the sides, put the elastic in, trim it off the sides a little bit, put your little elastic in, and go on. So it's simple. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Shalom. Bless you and Shalom. Thanks for calling in. We got a couple of other callers. The only thing that comes to my mind to share with y'all sisters because mother brought it really to my attention as she was saying, you know, minister to how how precious this daughter is. Yeah. I just want to use that as an example mm-hmm. really quick because do we really as mothers to our children, I'm talking about in the natural, are you able to discern the demons that are communicating to your children? Because you need to be able to war with them to fight the voices that are coming to your children. You need to know your child's spirit. Everything's not lovey-dovey about your child, I promise you. I got one. So you really need, need to be able to see, okay, what fears are really working? What rejection is really working? What reaction, response, like Mother's talking about, the countenance tells it all. So your children should be super easy to discern, super easy. And and obviously we might be ha- you know have blind spots and things like that and others have to endure with us as we grow through that. I don't mean that, but really help your children. Everything's not a yelling at them, a rod, a correction. Especially as they age, you need to really help them fight the enemy of your soul, as the enemy of your soul fights your child's soul. Let's go to the next caller. Area code six one five. Area code six one five. You're live. Shalom. Shalom. Bless you, sisters. How are you? Bless you. Bless you. Is this Sister Nelly? Yes, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> we're laughing and smiling here. Welcome to the show live, Sister Nelly. What you got? Ask away. Yes, ma'am. I'm I'm going back to the question Sister Chandra just uh, brought up about, you know, how do you deal with a young girl that um, is – you know, being persuaded with thoughts of, you know, marriage um, and what have you. I know for one, um, because, I, of course, I have a daughter, and my daughter would also experience uh, peer pressure. Um, other young girls are, you know, liking boys. Boys are responding back to them, and there is interaction um, with her peers uh, having, you know, a boy liking them. And when you don't get the same response, it could pose uh, a problem in your heart, in your mind, wondering why. So um, when my daughter was going through that uh, situation, I always reminded her that, you know, her first priority is unto the Father. If, if you stay focused, I would tell her, if you would stay focused on the things that are of the kingdom and you continue to serve Yahweh and fear Him with time, the Father will reveal to you who should cover you. Um, I think nowadays our problem is that the young girls uh, and even other daughters of Zion, uh, older women, 20, 30, 4 year olds they're so focused on who is going to cover me. Does he like me? Is he looking my way? Um, am I appealing to anyone? Is anybody noticing me? Instead of saying, Father, am I appealing to you? Um, do you notice me? Am I pleasing to you? Um, my daughter would stay fasting, praying, and seeking the Father. And one day, a brother looked at her and saw her holiness. More than anything, he was drawn to her righteousness, her set-apartness. So if if us as mothers instruct our daughters to stay focused on the Father instead of on, you know, boys or men, um, and marriage, we can really save our daughters a lot of headaches and a lot of heartaches because the Father, He is just, and He will provide a covering for all the daughters of Zion in due time and due season. Um, and I believe that pastor as well as the elders here are very wise in judging character as well. So, you know, trust the men in this ministry to help you in that decision as well. Very, very sound words. I thank you very much for adding to what Mother said. Uh, please, if there's something else, Sister Nelly, talk to us. Anything else? No, ma'am. That was it. I mean, these are also words that, you know, came from Pastor. He was, he's been listening to the broadcast tonight, and, you know, he just feels like the daughter's design just needs to stay focused on what's important and not, you know, chasing um, a pair of pants. That's right. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bless you. And, and Shalom. Bless you. Shalom. Who we love. Bless you, bless you. 
All right. Yeah, we got as as sisters, we got a lot of uh, a lot of rejection that talks to us. And and as your children, you know, become of age, I'm sure it's very important for you to help them fight rejection. Help them fight and war against rejection that's communicating to their minds. Let's go to the next phone call. Three one zero area code three one zero. You're live on the show, sister to sister. Can you hear myself? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. With the ten blessings, shalom. Shalom, sister Carisha. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Talk to us all the way out there on the west coast. Everything going okay? <laughs> what you What you got to say or ask? Um, I just want to offer some encouragement and thank the Father for uh, actually offering prayers, um, answering prayers. Uh, Mother Bullock, I've been in prayer about the mothers, you know, strengthening the mothers because the daughters we need them. And it's amazing to hear you on the show today. And I just want to, you know, thank the Father first and foremost. And thank you for your wisdom and knowledge. And also offer encouragement. Your sewing videos really encouraged me to get back into sewing. Um, I was, like you, I learned how to sew in school. I was taught in home ec. And I kind of fell off the wagon. But, you know, I remember making my own outfits as well. And my teacher really liked it as well. And I kind of fell off. But seeing your videos encouraged me um, to really go back and get in the seat and start sewing, and now I'm just taking off and sewing garments again and cloth-wise. So I wanted to thank you, and, and thank you for your wisdom and knowledge, and that's all I have. Hallelujah. Anything for her, Mother? Just keep on sewing. Hallelujah. <laughs> keep on sewing. <laughs> sewing. Uh-huh. Well, sewing for me is... um kind of like medicine. Hallelujah. Sometimes when your mind gets bothered, you can get to the sewing machine, begin to sew, and then after you look at your creation, you say, oh, that's nice, and you'd be forgotten all about what was bothering you. So and sewing so can be a, a medicine for you. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Good word. Thank you, Sister Teresa, for calling in to encourage our mother. Bless you. Bless you, Shalom. All right. Thank you. That's always good. Hallelujah. Thank you for calling in. To come and anything on your heart, seven zero seven zero five. You're live on Sister to Sister. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Sister. Is that uh, me? Yes, Sister. You've got hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, bless My you. My beloved for, sisters. Oh, uh, personal shout out to you and all the Northern Tribes and the and the daughters of Zion up there for taking care of our pastor and Sister Carol. Thank you. We love you dearly. Well, we we love you too, and thank you so much for that wonderful DVD that you sent up with us. I don't know if it was a DVD or a CD, but whatever it was, it was this re- beautiful recording of all you saying shalom to the northern <laughs> tribes of Israel, and it just made us cry. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was here, and it w- that was so nice. I, d- I just wanted to say thank you, Sister Ashley, for for for, uh, for being such a wonderful sister and doing that for us. It was just it was wonderful. Did you hear that, Brother Steve? No, I I could hear him talking, but I couldn't hear his words. Please repeat it. Sister, we love you. Oh, we love you. We love you, our brother. We can't wait to hug you. I think we would hug you both so tight we'd pop your heads. Pop your heads. Oh, right I think off. I think that would be mutual. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Thank you, Sister Wendy, for calling in. Is that all you got? No, that's not all I've got. I wanted to to tell Mother Buck that she's been an influence to me, and I have gotten some fabric and some uh, cord that is the color of Tekalit, and I've been researching. I have to tell you that I'm not much of a, a... or a seamstress or whatever. Brother Steve says that, yes, I am, but no, I'm not. I just sew straight lines is pretty much what I do. But I've got now a new interest in um, making some garments. And uh, we bought a whole lot of this cord, like, uh, to to sew around the trim of the fringe. And we bought, uh, Brother Steve and I bought some fabric. So uh, we're going to give it a shot. Um, I'm holding it up to Brother Steve's shoulders and seeing how we can make this thing and um even though I don't have a pattern we're going to give it a we're going to give it a shot I'm going to make brother Steve a garment and um we know that the power is in the fringe and also we bought a serger at a, a garage sale in town so uh I've been experimenting with that too so 
Thank you, Mother Bullock. You've given me a renewed interest in uh, sewing again, and um, I have the motivation to make some garments for my brothers. So thank you. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, she's Aren't smiling. you a good she's... influence? Oh. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> she's That's all I got. Uncle. Bless you. We love oh, you. Yes. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome for the for the video. It's the least we could do. Oh, it was wonderful. Hallelujah. And, well, uh, keep... Go ahead. That's all I got. So uh, shalom, my beloved sisters, and thank you for the wonderful motivation. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Shalom. You're very welcome. Shalom. Hallelujah. Forgive me if I'm cutting. I know I cut Sister Window off. There's sometimes a delay. I know Mom can hear it, too. There's a delay with the phone calls, and I got the background noise. Please forgive me. Uh, let's go to the next phone call. We got area code 936. 936, you're live. You're on air. Talk to us. Shalom alaikum, Sister Ashley and Mother Bullock and Sister Jennifer. Shalom, shalom, Sister shalom. Erica. Shalom. Bless you. Um, I just had a question for Mother Bullock. Um, I just was wondering how Mother Bullock um, built a strong relationship with the Most High and also um, how you find your contentment in Yahweh. You know, the the devil's a liar because he spaced out almost every word you said. It was like cutting <laughs> in and out. I don't know. Maybe it's cell phone service. Maybe I'm giving kudos to Satan and it wasn't him. Repeat your question, please, okay. daughter. I, we, did, we didn't hear you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was um, asking Mother Bullock how she uh, builds such a strong relationship with the Most High and how she finds contentment in Yahweh. All right. How do you build a strong relationship in Yahweh and find contentment, Mother. Talk to us. All right. How I built was through fasting and prayer. I used to shut in at church over weekends. I would go in on what they would call Friday night, and I would come out on Sunday after service, and I would stay in the church the whole time praying and fasting, and that's how I built my relationship. And then I thought about it. Even when I was pastoring, I used to bring the teenagers in because when they flesh would be up and all that stuff, I would bring them in and keep them in prayer and fasting all weekend, and that would calm that spirit. I would have shut in at least about every three months. I would have a shut in for myself and for them, and that would keep a keep all that dating want to date down <laughs> and looking at each other, so they would be too busy high in the spirit, and then also in um, Christianity, you know, when they play the music and they get them jumping and shouting and stuff, so they, they, just, they were just happy just to be praising the Father. So with that prep being stuck in the assembly all weekend, it just calmed that flesh down, calmed their minds down, and they begin to focus in on the Father. So when I come here, I feel like I'm in a shut-in <laughs> all weekend. So with teenagers and with yourself, you have to pull away sometimes and just shut down and just be with the Father. And you will build a relationship with him through prayer and fasting, you know. Can't get away from it, huh, Mom? Mm-hmm. Can't, can't get, get away, get away from, from it. Hallelujah. Can't, can't get away from Erica, anything else, daughter? No, Can ma'am. Um, oh. I really the question. I really appreciate it. Hallelujah. She says, you answer her question. She really appreciates it, Mother. We love you. We love you. We love you, you, Erica. And Erica is here with us. I'm sure you may have saw her saints uh, in the camera this uh, past weekend. She's here for a week, so we've loved it. Um, Bless you, Erica. See you soon. All right. Shalom, shalom. Still got an hour left. Thank you for all the call-ins. I guess I got a question, Mom. You had... Um, given a testimony, it was so beautiful, Pastor. I think it was a blog talk. Do you remember? I was, I would have been, I was at my house, okay. and so I'm listening to the radio. It wasn't maybe the last visit or something. That's what I'm trying to think. I don't know, but Pastor asked you uh, to talk. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Yes, kind. Of, I kind of, I kind of, I recall you speaking briefly about visions. You know how the Father has given you visions mm-hmm. and how He's really talked to you. And um, I guess I just want to ask you, is there one that you'd like to share with us? Something that maybe even the vision that brought you here or the vision that he exposed to you that pastor was a man of Yah? Uh, any dream, anything that just um, to edify? 
uh, yes. Um, any leader, like I said, any leader I, I sit up on them, if I'm going to sit up on them, I always ask the Father about them. I'll go in prayer. I say, Father, show me this man or show me this woman, you know, whether they're real or not. And he will always show me. I remember a leader I was up under, and um, she's a, it, was, it was a lady. She, uh, uh, she was an apostle. <laughs> And she really could preach. She had a gift of preaching, and she had a depth of the anointing, but not a deep depth of the anointing. And um, and I really admired her. And I was just sitting up under her, and I was praying, and the Father gave me a dream. And um, I dreamed I was in a shut-in, like I always do, shut myself in in prayer, and I had just came out of prayer, and my son was there. And I walked into the bathroom, and I looked up in the ceiling, and there was a snake running the ceiling. I said, mm. I said, son, you need to come <laughs> get this snake. I said, now, this dream, and it stayed with me. So I asked another pastor that interpreted dreams what the dream was. And she said, well, she didn't want to tell me because I was close to the pastor. You know, I worked closely to her. She didn't want to tell me. So I asked another pastor. He wouldn't tell me either. So I happened to be out eating dinner with one of my sister's friends. She knew how to interpret it. Dream. She said, and I was telling her about dreams. She said, you know what that is? That's your leader. They got a spirit in them that ain't right. I said, oh, my goodness. And so I had, I said, oh, Father, I got to get some money to this person. So a few weeks, I, I called her. I said, it's time for, the Father's telling me it's time for me to move on. I never told her about the dream or anything, and I moved on. And she said, you, you want to leave the ministry? I said, I'm, this Father's telling me to move on. She was a little upset with me, but I moved on. And so when I met Pastor, and I asked the Father concerning with him, and all I could see was him in white, and that he was a man of Yah. I said, thank you, Father. I finally found one that I could sit up under, and he showed me him. And I know I've never met a man like Pastor, not, not with that depth of anointing and loving the people. I've, I've been from one end of the United States to the other. And I've seen a lot of preachers. I've never, <laughs> never met anyone that with that type of anointing. And some, I've seen women that come kind of close, you know, but not not a man. Mm -mm. No, no, no. And um, my husband, he had anointing, but it wasn't like pastor's anointing. Pastor have a unique anointing. He had an anointing. I remember sitting at the table with his parents, and I, I looked at him. I said, I'm how y'all like having a little Moses? <laughs> and they just laugh, you know, because even in his walk, his talk, just the anointing is just there. It's just, it's just there, and he's an anointed man of Yah. And um, and for people who just can't see that, I don't know. Well, I do know what the problem is. <laughs> Satan got the mind. So, but I know the anointing when I see it, and I know a gift when I see it. And a lot of times, people get caught up in people's gifts. And run behind the gift, and then later on they figure out, uh oh, something ain't right here. But pastor's really anointed, the anointed man of Yah. And I'm so glad to be under his leadership. Hallelujah, beautiful. Thank you. Let's go to the next caller. We got a caller from Texas. Looks like area code two eight one. Area code two eight one. You're live on air with Sister Ashley and Mother Bullock. Talk to us. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Shalom. How are you? Uh, shalom, Sister Tiffany. Shalom. How are you? I'm I'm well, I'm well. Um I had a little bit of a twist on it. <laughs> and um I had a, a couple of words I just wanted to say, um say to Mother Bullock. Um I guess I'll start with Mother Bullock. I, I really want I really um appreciate the testimony. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful testimony and coming from um the church realm, um so so deep into it, uh, we were deep into it, <laughs> and um, so your testimony was really a blessing to me. Um, and dealing with women in the ministry, um, a lot of times you deal with uh, women in the ministry, and and um, it's not easy. And so to hear such a beautiful testimony of some of a woman in the ministry uh, really touched me. And so I just wanted to thank you just for giving that testimony and um, just being the beautiful example that you are. Um, and so I just, I wanted to start with that to say thank you. Um, um, 
And um, oh, my my uh, little testimony. I was uh, in the kitchen one day. I'll keep it very short. I was in the kitchen one day, and I was uh, busy doing uh, different things. And as I was doing different things, I um, heard, and my husband was sitting, and um, I heard in my spirit, um, I was just working, and my husband was sitting, and I heard in my spirit, too much Martha, not enough Mary. And, And so as I heard that in my spirit, I knew I was doing too much. I was too busy. And I needed to stop and spend more time with Yahweh and spend more time um, with my husband, just have a seat sometimes and um, spend more time with the Father. And uh, I was really reminded of that as you talk about prayer and uh, in spending more time in prayer. Sometimes as married women and women with uh, children, we forget how much uh, we need to really give to the Father. And uh, that was it. I just want to say thank you and bless you. And uh, please continue on. Continue on with your sewing videos because they're beautiful. And uh, just thank you for your work in the ministry. Thank you. Uh, she says shalom and thank you. Ah, bless you. Uh, bless you, Sister Tiffany. Thank you for calling in. Too much Martha, not enough Mary. I don't think I'm going to forget that all night. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to forget that all night. I'm going to check myself. Thank you for sharing that. Shalom to you. Thanks for calling in. Shalom. Shalom. All right. If you don't know Martha and you don't know Mary, sister, go check it out. Go check it out. All right, next caller, 908. 908, you're live on air. Can you hear us? Shalom, shalom, and bless you, my sisters and Mother Bullock. This is Sister Joy. Oh, shalom. <laughs> shalom, shalom. <laughs> um, I wanted to call in and give some admonishment as well as a testimony, if that's okay. Please, feel free. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I first off wanted to say um, thank you to Mother Bullock. I know I have said it before, but I wanted to make sure I admonished you among our sisters. Um, uh, my, my testimony um, would be that, um, you know, coming into this walk, uh, and moving to North Carolina, um, uh, you, you know, when you're early in the walk and the devil's trying to uh, administer, well, trying to submit things to your mind and tell you how, you know, um, you're all alone. You've, you know, you've, uh, you know, lost your grandmother. You know, your grandmother's already passed on. Your mother, you know, well, she's spiritually dead. I actually live around my mother, but I don't really look to her for advice. And I don't know how many other people are in that situation. I imagine many because not of all, all of our family members come into this walk. But it's really a lonely feeling when you, when somebody is alive and you can talk to them, but you don't look to them for advice or any type of encouragement because they're spiritually dead. And, um, you know, with all of these things, at the time this is um, – actually uh, uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and I remember actually praying to the Father and asking him for <laughs> more mothers in, to, to help. <laughs> you know, I, I missed that. I actually missed having a mother, even though my mother is physically still alive. And I missed having, you know, that, that relationship. And... My admonishment to you, Mother Bullock, is that <laughs> mothers like you, especially here in North Carolina, <laughs> and, and Sister Jaja, who's like a spiritual mother to me as well, are an answered prayer for the Most High. I, I mean, really, something really needed and something that I am so thankful to the Father to have and for answering our prayer. So hopefully that is some encouragement. <laughs> And I bless the Father for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I did not have a question. <laughs> but I you did don't. You, you said you tell. don't. You don't have a question. You do not. No, oh. ma'am. I just wanted to 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 give a testimony and admonish Mother Bullock um, for just being the mother that she is, especially especially to us here in North Carolina, and and, and just thank her. That's Oh yes, ma'am. She she's kept quiet. Hallelujah. Anything to say, mother? You're just receiving, humbled. Oh, probably tears in her eyes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to the next caller, Sister Joy. Thank you for calling in. We love you, sister. See you soon. All right, bless you. Love you all. Bless you, shalom. Let's go to the other callers. Thank you all for calling in tonight to make this show what it is. Going to California. Looks like Sister Melina. We heard from you. I believe it was last week for the first time. Sister Melina, can you hear me? Shalom, shalom. Yes, I can hear you. Talk to us. Oh, I, I would just like to connect with Sister Joy. What she was just speaking on with uh, her grandmother passing away and not being able to connect with her mother, but she is still alive. Um, my grandmother just passed away in February, and it was brand new, I was brand new in the face when it had happened, and it was uh, very, very frustrating to not be able to connect with my my family and let them know what was going on spiritually, um, and I was brand new in the face, so it was like I didn't really know how to connect with other saints um, and, and figure out how to deal with um, my mother and my grandmother passing, and so I, I just wanted to say I, I can definitely relate with that, and I am do, doing a lot better with it now. Um, and now that I actually speak to the saints now, it it has definitely helped me a lot. Um, but I do have a question for uh, Mother Bullock. Um, how, or even even you, sister, if you can answer it. Um, how how do you fight against um feelings and um how do I reword this? Um so when when someone constantly is, is lying to you but they're they're trying they, they know that they shouldn't and they, they try to get out of it um out of the lying spirit um and but they they keep doing it over and over, and in my well, I don't know if it's I'm pretty sure it's not of me. Um, I, I keep hearing voices in my head saying that you're you know you're, you're you're letting it happen again, you're letting it happen again. You're not supposed to be doing that. They're they're using you. How do you get out of that? And and just um, I, I I guess I don't I don't know what really you know, how to get out of it, uh, and knowing that. The person means well, but is is not going the right direction. How do you just block feelings and just keep and know that the father will take care of it? How how do you go go about that? Uh, is the person a believer? Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> go, mom. Oh, she says she says go ahead because she wants to, she wants to hear what I have to say. I'm not mm-hmm. trying to override mother by any means. Um, two okay. things, pastor often has a, a comment. And he'll say, "He who angers you controls you." Right. So in this particular okay. situation, he who lies to you controls you. So it's actually the control factor that you know, like mother said earlier, when you go to prayer, it's always you, 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 you. So oftentimes, many, many, many things happen in our lives, sisters. Everything that's going on around you can help you see you. It's not, uh, man, my husband's just this way or my neighbor's just this way. or No, it's about seeing you. Shout out to Sister LaShonda because I know she knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, She's very, a, a woman of well understanding in this. We have talked about it many times. So what you have going on in your situation is so that you will see you not so that you will be discerning of a lie, right? Because we can all discern lies. And I hope that helps right. you because 
oftentimes we build and establish relationships upon lust and upon, um, you know, inordinate affections and upon control and, and different means of relationships. It's never about love, love, love. Love will keep you forgiving. And since she asked an important question, Mother Bullock asked, is he or she a believer? Yes, then you keep forgiving. And so these lies or this lie, whatever you're discerning, may be coming about so that you will continue to grow in forgiveness. Maybe you have a past of unforgiveness. Not, I'm not trying to say that personally, just for any of us. You know, if you have you're, a past, you're absolutely hitting on, sister. <laughs> okay, on hallelujah. Speaking. If you if you have a past, uh, you know, if you have a past nature of holding on to things and bitterness and unforgiveness, you're going to be challenged in that area in the faith and in the walk. You will continue to be challenged. Thank Yah for His mercy and His love. You will continue to be challenged in an area until you perfect it. It will no longer be a challenge to you when you let go of the control that it has over you. That will be obtained through prayer and fasting. That will be obtained through changing, changing your nature and changing you know, how someone uh, controls you. So, so just, just walk in forgiveness. It's very easy. For us to say this, you know, because mother's, mm-hmm, amen, because she's listening too, you know, it's very easy to say it, but for you to walk it out, sister, that's where you're going to, that's where you're going to experience pain, you know, you're going to experience pain that will, you know, it'll make you reach out to a sister for help, reach out to the father for help, it'll keep you very humble as you go through these things, it's not easy, you know, what I'm saying to you is not easy, it's just possible, and your determination will keep you motivated. If you slack in your determination, if you slack in your prayer and your fasting, then it will make this trial as long as you want it to be. And it will shorten your trial as short as you want it to be. So it depends on your motivation on how quick you want to be over this, right? Because the lies may always be there. I've always, always told sisters, if no one in this world changes around you, what are you going to do about you? If a person never stops lying to you, what are you going to do about you, right? If your husband never stops, pick, uh, never stops throwing his underwear right beside of the, the basket and he, and he won't just pick, pick it up and put it in the basket, it's right there. Wow. But, you know, I'm getting passionate just for humor to break up the monotony. Yeah. But seriously, you know, if he never does that, I can't be controlled by that. I got to pick up the underwear. I really got to do that. I got to do it with joy and thanksgiving and hallelujah. I got a husband who's got underwear. So um, yes, does that help you? I know it does. You're laughing. You're receiving yes, it. Sister. I know your spirit, sister. I I, uh, I thank you again for calling Absolutely. in. Good question. Anything else? Yes. No, no. You that, that was perfect. Thank you so much, sister and mother. Shalom. You, oh, shalom. You're so welcome. Hallelujah. Mother, you said a key word earlier. Another question from, from my heart. Just for you to talk about, really. Mine didn't even be a question. Just, you know, about gifts. Gifts is something that, you know, the word says to, to covet gifts, you know, and to really, you know, you were talking about even sewing being a gift. Um, you know, when you come and you come new into the faith, you maybe not even know what spiritual gifts are. You know, there's discernment. There's words of wisdom, words of knowledge. There's um, understanding. There's prophecy. There's so much. How do you direct someone? Let's say a sister says, Mom, I want to interpret dreams. What would you say to her? Pray. Okay. Pray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you find out a lot, a lot of things you'll find out through prayer. He'll show you you, and he'll show you your gifts. He'll show you in prayer. He will show you that prayer and fasting, it brings out a lot of gifts in you. You'll know where you're supposed to be at in the Father. you know what you're supposed to be doing if you're praying and you're fasting. Hallelujah. I'm going to a ministry break. 47 minutes left in the show, sisters. We're still waiting on your calls. I, at this moment, don't have any questions. Uh, Sister Jennifer, if you have any, call back in. Uh, I really, I'm enjoying this. I really enjoy this show tonight. So thank you for making it what it is. Again and again, I'll say it over. Let's go to ministry break and hear our lovely Sister Wenda. Shalom. This is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift 
offering or letter of support is Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. PMB number 1 Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L A F A Y E T T E, Tennessee. 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. Hallelujah. Sometimes Mother says some really beneficial things, even during a commercial break. Thank you, Mom. But back live, back on air, last question on my heart, nothing in the queue right now. Mom, it's a young ministry. It's, it's you know, 20-year-olds, it's 30-year-olds, you know, not a lot of aged um, individuals come through with experience, knowledge. What do you say to the next generation of upcoming mothers? Is there something you can share with them? Because we have some brewing, you know, mm-hmm. we have some uh, Sister Carols, you know, that are coming up that that maybe you could bless with some words of, of wisdom, advice, you know, not, not to obviously fear the faces of men, but to learn their place as a mother, a role that may be uncomfortable for them? Well, um, as Sister Carol, she don't know how much I admire her. She's such a strong woman and has so much knowledge and understanding, and she's quiet, very quiet and humble, and I admire that in her. Um, is just um, the young lady should take that pattern and watch her because she's such a strong woman and she and she loves her husband. I watch her how she take care of how she takes care of pastor and it's just amazing, you know. And she just love him and she's humble and she's just, you know. And I say to myself, Wow, I wish everybody could be like that. <laughs> you know, they have such a beautiful marriage, but uh, she just she's a good woman to pattern yourself after. She's, she, she's really a mother. She really is. She's, yeah. Even though she's young, but she's really a mother. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes yes. I'm sitting here at your at your feet, mom, saying, "Talk more, talk more, <laughs> mom." And your answers are so short and simple, sisters. I got to call the show. If mother, you don't have anything else, you you want to share anything, a story, uh, anything for us, mom, before we call it. This is your your first time live on air. With us. Story. He says story. Uh, <laughs> earlier, even earlier, Mom, when we were, you know, we're in the said, two things, really, I always say two things, Donna, two things always come at once in my mind. I am going to make we were at my house. Him Sisters, we were at his um, my house. Mother Bullock drove back, you know, she's staying with Ella Becker, and he lives, you know, he's my neighbor, uh, my husband's neighbor. And uh, she came into our home right before the show, you know, we were going to ride together, and uh, brother, brother Doug says, how many how many pastors, Mom? You know, builds a house for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Don't get me started," because you know we oh, had yeah. minutes until we left. Oh Go ahead, yeah, Mom. <laughs> pastors. Oh my goodness. Um, like I said, there's no pastor like Pastor Dow. There's no pastor. And I was sharing with them um, some pastors I know that they uh, they had the members working, building, selling dinners having different services, thousands, raised thousands and thousands of dollars to build a new sanctuary. So this pastor decided he, he's going to get, he's a single pastor, and he decided he'd get married. But when he got married, I guess his wife didn't like the house. So he took the money and remodeled the house, and he lost all of his members. And then there's another pastor, Church of God in Christ pastor, um, doing the same thing, had the members working and raising money and stuff, and 
they were going to build, a, they was in a storefront, so they wanted to build a sanctuary. And um, he decides he's going to build a house with the money. So he lost a lot of his members. So there's a lot of them out there, they, they think about themselves. They're not thinking about the, the people that they're spending, they're buying their high-dollar cars, their planes. They're not thinking about the lay people. And I was um, talking with a lady the other day, and she said she left assembly because she said, I always paid my tithes, I paid my offerings. She said, I got I got a need. I needed my light bill paid. She said, and I went to them and asked them to help me with my light bill. And she said, he said he would help her, but he didn't want to. And and, and it was so hard for him to help her. And she said, I left that church. I said, you did the right thing. And there's so many pastors out there, they will not help. The people, they'll take the money in, but they will not help them. They can come and ask, but they will not help them at all. And that's a that's a shame. Yes, ma'am, it is. And and the, the second thing I thought about was we were pulling up, you know, for the show. We were outside. Mm-hmm. Will you share with the with the sisters what you were talking about to me when you said, uh, I think your son was very small, very, very mm-hmm. small, and a man came up to you, prophesied to you. Uh, oh, just, yes. Just for storytelling. Yes. Um, I was in a service, Church of God in Christ service, and I think my son, he's 26, 9, he had to be about 9 or 10 and the man came up and he called me out. He said, um, you going to minister to women. I'm looking at him. Oh, really? <laughs> you going I said, okay. And he said, "You gonna, really, you going to minister to women? I said, okay. And I always kept that thought in the back of my head, not knowing. And I remember some years ago when I was pastoring, a lady came into the assembly and she said, you going you gonna to stop pastoring. You're not going to pass them along, but you're going to just be like a help to someone else, but you're not going to pass them anymore. I just looked at us, well, thank the Father, because I was tired anyway. You need to thank the Father, but I didn't understand what they were saying, but now I understand. I could see the Father working way back then, that he knew he was going to bring me into this walk. And... um it's just amazing how the father, and I remember another lady prophesying to me. She said, the father's getting ready to give you a knowledge of the word that, that you never had before. And I looked at her, and I got that prophecy at least twice, a knowledge of the word. And I'm thinking, I said, well, I thought I knew the word, but I didn't realize I didn't know the word. I was brought up in the Christianity. I had the Christianity word. I didn't have the truth. And that was amazing how the Father used Christian people to prophesy into my life to tell me what was coming ahead. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you. We talked long enough, Mom, to get a caller. That's worth it. All right. Georgia Saints calling from area code 423. Can you hear us? You're on air. Shalom. It's Sister Jennifer again. Bless you. I just have a question I wanted to ask before you all ended the show. Yes, go ahead. Thanks for calling back in. Mother's listening. Uh, Mother Bullock, um, knowing the man that Elder Bullock was and the lies that he poured into and the um, people that he was able to share the truth with, which was very evident, you know, when we were able to attend his home going, as a wife, sometimes it can be easy um, of us to think that we have a a strong head that, you know, us being the weaker vessel means that we can kind of, use our husband's relationship with Yah as a means for our salvation, which is the wrong way of thinking. So my question is, how do you um, have in your mind to maintain that your own close relationship with the father when it's easy to lean on a strong husband? That's a good question. At first, when I met Al Bullock, we first got married, uh, he... He was coming out of Christianity, and he didn't know that much about the truth. So I knew more than he did. So he began to study, and he went way past me. And when he went past me, I almost got relaxed. But the Father reminded me, no, you can't do that. Because I have to stay prayerful, and I have to stay, um, uh, I have to keep my mind on him, because if I don't, 
the enemy will come in and play with me. So I didn't want the enemy to come in and play with me. So I had to be, remind myself, you got to pray. You've got to fast. you got to get in the Word also. You just can't lean on your husband, even though you want to lean on him, but you just can't do it. Because we have to have our own personal relationship with him. Because when we stand before him, we got to stand before him ourselves. We can't say, well, my husband, <laughs> you don't want to hear that. you got to have a relationship with him. So you got to stand before the Father yourself. we got to remember that. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say it's very refreshing to hear you speak on fasting and prayer, you know, because I believe it's very important for um, just for us in the faith. And thank you so much for just bringing and shedding light on um, on those areas for us. It just really means a lot. So bless you and shalom. Oh, shalom. Bless you. Shalom, my sister. Thanks for calling in. See you next week. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. I shouldn't say see you. I should. I will hear her next week, Mom. Real quickly, what comes to my mind too on praying because you you really reiterated that for us, and I'm very thankful. What's praying supposed to be like? You say you know get, you you can get up changed, you know. Mm-hmm. And I obviously I know this. I know I, I know what I would say, but I don't know what you would say. I don't know your experience. So you know because because we often have you know we can get religious with it and go through formations mm-hmm. of it and I think we have to spend this amount of time. Just mm-hmm. just uh, share as much personal as you want to. What's a day like with Mother Bullock? What's a, what's a praying life like? I mean you don't have to be on your knees per se mm-hmm. to be praying in your mind mm-hmm. and while you're driving. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and just talk to us mm-hmm. about uh, developing even more of a prayer life. Well, the lack of day-to-day life is you steady talking to the Father all the time. Just every little thing, just ask Him, you know, is this right, this right, is this right. Uh, before I got ready to come up here, um, I knew it was time for me to come up here because I felt like I needed more of um, I knew I can come here and I can lay on the floor and pray because I need that. Praying at home is good, but something about coming into the sanctuary, Hallelujah. praying, because in the sanctuary there's not, there's a spirit there. There hasn't been a lot of stuff going on and this and that. It's just anointing in a different atmosphere laying there before him. So, Keeping a prayerful mind all the time, even when you're out in the street, you really have to keep a prayerful mind because I'm out there in that world and there's some folk, you know, and sometimes I travel by myself, so I really have to pray. I remember leaving early this morning around three, about, about 4 o'clock, and most of the gas stations in Atlanta where my sunset was closed, and it was one that was closed, but you could use your card. And I pulled in and got out. And the Spirit said, you do not want to be out here in the dark, get no gas, go down further and find a gas station that was plenty of light. You are by yourself. So I got back in the truck, drove down the road, and there's a, a QT right down the street there, well lit it. I said, thank you, Father, because sometimes we do just, we don't think, but because of prayer, it brings your mind back. You know, you can hear the Father say, okay, you need to get in this truck and go down the road. You know, and obey him. That's a, and then it's a lot of times we don't obey him when we hear him. That gets us in trouble. Then we have to repent and start all over again. But when you hear him speak, obey. Because a lot of women have lost their lives because they didn't hear the Father. They heard him, but they said, oh, it'll be all right. No, you get in the truck and you go down the road, and then you'll be safe. Yes, ma'am, and I had asked you, you know, Mom, what do you think about that? You know, pastors talked about it, the the South Carolina issue, you know, and the and the man coming into the church. Mm-hmm. Will you share what you said with me when the father warned you? That's what you're saying. Yeah, then. he'll warn you before anything comes. If you are a pray, praying person, you love the father, he's going to send warnings. Now, it's up to you to accept the warnings. Um, just like I knew my husband was going to pass. He had sent me the warning, but... I didn't want to accept it, but I knew because I had to dream twice. Anytime I dream something twice, it's a done deal. It's coming to pass. So I didn't want to accept but he will always send you warnings. Now, that young man, he's in the politics and in the religion. That don't work. That don't mix. <laughs> that don't mix. So I know the father had to deal with him. Now, he being hard-headed, he caused at least eight other lives to be lost because he was hard-headed. 
And sometimes when we are, I used to tell people all the time, when the Father's God, got a judgment call on you, you hard head, I don't want to be nowhere around you. So when it falls, <laughs> me, my, I get my head knocked off. No, because you being hard head, no. Mm-mm. When I know you walking in air, I don't fool with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm-mm. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the caller queue. Got another call that looks like maybe it's just a carol. 615, Erico 615, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Sister Ashley, and it is Sister Carol. Bless you and bless Sister Jennifer and bless our beloved Mother Bullock. I'm sorry I'm coming in so late, um, but when you all were talking about prayer, I just wanted to chime in on a little bit that might help some new daughters of Zion that may not know, you know, just see people say, I don't know how to pray. But before I do that, may I just say a word to Mother Bullock? Yes. Yes. Mother Bullock, bless you. Your words are so humbling. I feel so unworthy. I look to you because you're you're my example, and I just we, we're we're all striving for holiness. But I just think you're a perfect example for the daughters of Zion to follow. And I do appreciate your words. They're very humbling, and I love you very dearly, Mother. Thank you for everything. Bless you. Bless you. Okay, speaking about prayer, um, I don't know if. Some of the saints that have been around for a while remember um, Pastor and Brother Shane doing teachings on the temple. And if you think about it, the priest would go to the temple. They would petition for, you know, our sins and things like that. So now that we're in this time and we can go before the Father our own self, I remember Pastor saying, uh, mentioning something about we're supposed to uh, have that pattern still of, like we're going into the temple because now we're able to go. We have an advocate, but we're able to go to the Father. So in the temple, um, first and foremost, even in the natural, you would acknowledge. You wake up, you acknowledge your spouse. You know, good morning, how are you, all these kinds of things. We acknowledge the Father. Father, you are Yah and Yah alone. I bless you. I thank you. All those things, that acknowledgement is what we should start prayer with. Mm -hmm. Then after that, um, Repentance, because then that's our sacrifice. You know, they had to sacrifice a bull or a bullock or an animal, but we have to give our sacrifice. Father, I've sinned. Please forgive me. I I need your help. I need repentance. You know, all those things. So you go before the Father and come clean. After that, then you make your petition known. Then you start asking the Father, Father, you know, I need help in this area. What should I do in this situation and all these things? And then following that should be praise. Praise and giving thanks for all that he's done for you and giving thanks for him answering you, even though you don't see it being made manifest at that time. But just knowing by faith that what you've asked for, it shall be done. And then like Mother Bullock said, then just stop. Let the Father answer you. Let the Father minister to you, speak to you in your spirit. And if you kind of go through that, I'm not trying to tell you this is how you have to pray, but, you know, the Father gave us an example. And if you kind of go kind of through the steps and make sure that your spirit is clear when you're coming to the Father in that manner, he can answer you so much quick, quick, quicker. And, you know, so it's it's just a blessing. And you know that you've actually just bore all before the Father and that he's there to answer you, and he and he will do that. So I don't know if this was able to help anybody, but I sure hope it did. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sister Carol, before you go, can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. On that line with, with praying, you know, sometimes because we are the weaker vessel and we get caught up in feelings and emotions, I think sometimes we, and I know you've heard this from other daughters of Zion's heart, so I'm asking it live. Everyone get ready to hear an answer that's going to benefit you. We focus on a feeling when we're praying. You know, we want to feel. We want to feel his spirit or feel his touch or feel like he's hearing us. Can you speak mm-hmm. on on what is it not like not like I can even use the word supposed to feel like but you know you don't you may or may not always feel this touch starting off you know you may or may not get your answer right away uh, how do you encourage someone who you know you have to go through the motion of what you said acknowledgement repentance make your petition known praise stop and hear you have to do those things Right, Sister Carol, before you begin to develop an anointing with the Father, a relationship and an intimacy, will you go into that, please? Right. Well, just, you know, we're the pattern of the church. The man is is kind of in the similitude of the Father. We are the bride. 
So if you think about it that way, think about it in a marriage situation. And I, I, I hate to bring that up because I know there are some that are not married, but you can get an understanding from what I'm saying. You, um, you have a new relationship, okay? Um, you're with, with a new uh, brother, your husband or something, and you're, you're learning each other. So your relationship is developing and it's growing. So the same way that we go to the – you may not feel those butterflies all, you know, every time, but there's still that love, that overwhelming love is still there. And then as you grow older, that, you know, you don't need the butterflies. The love is just there. So the anointing is beautiful, and it's a wonderful thing, but if, if that's all you're seeking is to have the anointing, where's your true relationship? Because if you think about it, you don't always feel those butterflies with your husband, especially once you've been settled in, but it's still such a beautiful soundness. It's a soundness to where you don't need the flesh, but the spirits are lined up as one. And then that's how you can just kind of gauge your mind as to not just seeking, you know, after the flesh, but seeking the spirit, seeking to be really known of him. I hope that helps a little bit. Absolutely. I really loved it. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. It was very timely. I'll let you go, Sister Carol, if you don't have anything else. All right. Well, just bless all you daughters of Zion. Thank you once again, Ashley. You're doing a wonderful and amazing job, and I really do appreciate it. Oh, bless you. Bless you, my mother and sister. Shalom. Bless you. All right. Hallelujah. Mother, anything on that note, just developing that intimacy? Anything comes to your mind? Um, yes. Um, as Sister Carol was talking, yeah, she went, went right down the line. That's just the way I pray. <laughs> That's exactly the way I pray. Um, you have to build that relationship with the Father. Um, you you just can't just go through life and not build a relationship. Just like she said, with marriage, you have to work with it. You have to. There's times you might not feel like you're married, but you know you're married. <laughs> you know, <There's, laughs> you know, you know. There's times you might not feel the father, but he's there. You know, he haven't gone nowhere. Listen, you t- checked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to a ministry break. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna end it just yet, Mom. I, I'm really. I'm really liking the way it's going. Just in case there's someone else who wants to call in. 24 minutes left. Um, <laughs> let's hear Sister Winda again. Call in if you have any questions, testimonies, or encouragement, sisters. We love you all. Hold tight. Stay tuned. Shalom. This is Sister Winda. I hope that all of you are enjoying this particular broadcast that you're listening to right now. We really appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth Radio broadcast. We try to make sure we do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you'd like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is... Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Pastor Charles Dowell, Jr. 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. PMB number 1 Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there, and be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. And do please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom. The King is coming. Hallelujah. I had said on the messy break, Mom, your, uh, your time with Yah has just made you simple-minded. You know, I said, as complex as Yah is, 
He's so simple, you know, and you can hear that in her speech. Tell, tell me what you were beginning to tell me when I said, please hold it, hold it for the show, Mom. Go ahead. I, I was thinking um, I was invited to speak at um, some years ago at this church, this very educated pastor and family. They have all these degrees and stuff. And I come in there and I just taught the word just as simple and just went, and the lady come up to me. She said, you were so good. It was just so simple and I said, I said, word is it's simple. I mean, we make it hard and complicated, but it's simple. What the word says, do you would just do it, you know? And we try to add on and and make it stretch. You know, it's like it's so deep, <laughs> <laughs> but it's simple. It says, why submit to your husband? Simple. Submit. That's it. You know, we. You know, yeah. I mean. And and we don't want to hear that word submit, please. You know, but that's easy. He said submit. He didn't say for you to fall all of it in love. That's what we want to do, fall in love, then oh, I, then I can submit to you. No, submit. That's all he asked you to do is submit. And I and, and I, I enjoyed my husband because all I did was submit to him and that he loved me back. And then you, there's, there's such a love there. Why well, you just submit? I used to call him. I had the shop open. I would call him. I said, sweetheart, what you want to eat today? You know? He said, well, I don't know. And then he will name something. I said, okay, I'll pick it up and bring it home. I would do that every day. I would ask him, what do he want to eat? You know, not what I wanted to eat, but what did he want to eat? You know, that's submitting. That's showing him that you love him and you care for him. And that man wouldn't do nothing. Oh, man, he loved me. You could tell that he loved Mother Bullock because I loved him and I submitted to him. Hallelujah. We got a phone call. Let's go to North Carolina. North Carolina, let's see. Who we got? 919. Talk to us. You're live on air. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Shalom, shalom. Can you hear me? Shalom, shalom. Yes, but we don't know who you are. Introduce yourself. Who is this? This is Sister Missa from North Carolina. Shalom, Mother Bullock. Shalom. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Sister Misha, bless you. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. I don't have a question. I just wanted to call in and say shalom to the family. Um, I've been listening to the program for a couple of months now, and um, as a matter of fact, Mother Bullock introduced me to the ministry as a whole, Mother and Elder Bullock. And I just wanted you all to know what a blessing the ministry has been to me because um, I grew up in the truth. But even having grown up in this truth, there's so much that I'm learning every day, so many things that are new to me. And it is beautiful to see that there are people out here in my age group who are sincere about this walk and really serving the Father and and walking in his ways. And I just wanted to call in and just give praise to the Father for that and commend you all for it. Um, And getting back to what Mother was saying earlier about um, the pastors not wanting to help the members of the congregation, um, that that shouldn't be. And it's just beautiful to see that Pastor Dow and the Saints have a community going where everybody is helping one another, especially in this day and age when, you know, times are hard and we need each other to survive. Um, it's just a wonderful thing to see, and um, I just praise the most high for that. Bless you. Bless you, sister. Thank you so much for calling in. You, I don't know how, but you brought tears to my eyes just knowing that you know you're out there, you're listening, mm-hmm. you're following us. Um, I just, I, I praise Yahweh. I praise Him with you, with you, my sister. Welcome, welcome aboard. Uh, continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Yeshua Hamashiach. I hope that we will meet you. Will we uh, ever meet you, my sister? Yes, we will. Most I will. I hope to see you all and meet everyone very soon. So. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, you will. will. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you. Keep keep listening. Keep calling in. I will. I will. I'm going to hang up now and continue to listen because, like I said, I don't have a question. I just wanted to call in and and speak to everyone and and make myself known. So, shalom. Shalom. Bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Sister Misha, remember her in your your prayers and your thoughts when she comes to mind. Lift her up, saints. Hallelujah. Got another. uh, Looks like Sister Melina again. Let's see. Area code 925, is it you, Sister Melina? Sister Melina, going once, maybe you pushed one when you didn't mean to. Going twice, three times, 
gone. She's probably just listening. All right, Mother, great show. Thank you. This is your first, not last, I hope, time of sitting in here with me every time you're ever here on a fifth day. If you're willing and Yah's willing and uh, and you can come in here and talk to us, please do so. Uh, let that man's prophecy really work in you, Mom, that you would minister to us. Uh, you're very needed, very needed. There is a shortage of mothers in, in this ministry. Uh, why would you think, and I asked Pastor that question. He had an awesome answer, too. But why would you think so so many aged women or mothers are not willing to come to the truth, Mom? They don't want to submit, really. They don't want to change. They, um, they, they see the truth, and they know there's so much change they have to make, and they're afraid to make the change. They're afraid to lose members. They're afraid to lose friends. So they, they're just afraid, fearful. Stuck in their ways, mm-hmm. huh? Got a got a way that is not his way. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, sisters! Every one of you that have called tonight, I know I've said it multiple times. Thank you, thank you, because I came in here very, very empty. You know, me and Sister Jennifer, we always say that we're empty before you tonight. You know, we'll come in with notes or or, or books or whatever, but we still stay very, we stay empty. Uh, tonight, I was really empty. I took the week off, Mom, in my mind and everything. Obviously, not from y'all, but going, wow, I'm I'm going into blog talk with absolutely nothing on my mind at all. So I hope Mother's going to talk to us a lot because I don't got much to say. Uh, it's been beautiful. I, I took some notes. Uh, Sister Maris has took some notes. As she said last week when she called in, every week is on time for her. Every blog talk show is on time for her. You know, in her in her prayer life, something gets answered on this show. I thank Yah for his spirit that would move forth in the show and use Sister Jennifer or myself or anyone in the ministry to reach you. Yes, there's an anointing on this ministry that we haven't done ourselves. Yes, there's an anointing on Pastor Dow that he has not done himself. The anointing that Mother Bullock sees in him is not something he can conjure up or in make believe. You know, she's she's met a lot of men of Yah, uh, a lot of uh, women, you know, women of Yah or false apostles, whatever the case may be. Uh, so I'm glad to be in the land of the living, and you should too. We should never take uh, advantage of that. Keep pressing, keep fighting, keep listening to the Spirit. And when you don't hear, try to hear. Stop yourself. Slow yourself. Quiet in your spirit. Really hear what he's got to say. If you don't take anything else from tonight, hear Mother Bullock's words repetitiously in your mind. Every time you have a problem, pray and fast, pray and fast, pray and fast, sisters. Pray and fast. Pray and fast for one another, for the ministry, and anything that comes to your mind. Seek Yah. And have your own intimate relationship. That is what this ministry, uh, that's what Pastor Dow reaches out to each of you about. He's just a messenger. If you could just know his heart and know his mind as he says it, he wants you to know Yah. Mm -hmm. He cannot stand before the king for you. Mm -hmm. So keep seeking Yah. Keep seeking Yah. We look forward to seeing you, Sister Misha. Thank you, callers. Thank you, sisters. We'll see you next week with Sister Diane. Got a great show coming up next week, so stay tuned. Thank you all for always listening. Our numbers are growing, not that we're trying to get them higher, but Yah keeps bringing his sheep in, and we thank him for that, the gathering of Israel. I'm going to play, if I can find it, the trumpet or the shofar and call it a night. Shalom, shalom, saints. Shalom. And Yahweh, Elohim, said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart.